researchers are interested in the specific value of a mean for one or more groups. However, it is common for a researcher to be more interested in the difference between means than in the specific values of the means themselves. We'll take as an example the data from the animal research case study. In this experiment, students rated on a seven-point scale whether they thought animal research is wrong. The sample sizes, means, and variances are shown separately for males and females. As you can see, the females rated animal research as more wrong than did the males. This sample difference between the female mean of 5.35 and the male mean of 3.88 is 1.47. However, the gender difference in this particular sample is not very important. What is important is the difference in the population. The difference in sample means is used to estimate the difference in population means. The precision of the estimate is revealed by a confidence interval. In order to construct a confidence interval, we are going to make three assumptions. One, the two populations have the same variance. This assumption is called the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Two, the populations are normally distributed. Three, each value is sampled independently from each other value. The consequences of violating these assumptions is discussed in a later section. For now, it is enough to say that small to moderate violations of the first two assumptions do not make much difference. A confidence interval on the difference between means is computed using the formulas shown here. m1 minus m2 is the difference between sample means, t sub cl is the t for the desired level of confidence, and S sub M1 minus M2 is the estimated standard error of the difference between means. The meanings of these terms will be made clearer as the calculations are demonstrated. We continue to use the data from the animal research case study and will compute a confidence interval on the difference between the mean of the females and the mean of the males. The first step is to compute the estimate of the standard error of the difference between means. Remember that the standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So, we will be estimating the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the difference between the means. This is quite a mouthful, so we will continue to refer to this as the standard error of the difference. The formula for calculating the standard error of the difference is shown here. This may look familiar because it was covered in the chapter on sampling distributions. Remember that we are assuming the variances are equal, so the variance of the females is assumed to be equal to the variance of the males. Normally, we estimate the variance of the populations using the variance of the sample, but we just said that the variances of the two populations, that is, the female and male populations, are the same. So which sample variance do we use to estimate the population variance? We estimate the variance of the two populations by averaging our two sample variances. Thus, our estimate of variance is computed using this formula. MSE is our estimate of the variance of the populations. In this example, MSE equals 2.743 plus 2.985 divided by 2, which equals 2.864. Here is our formula again for the standard error of the difference. Here is the formula for the estimated standard error of the difference. Notice that instead of a sigma sub m1 minus m2, there is an s sub m1 minus m2. This is because we are estimating the standard error. The formula using the sigma was for the actual standard error. Notice also that MSE, which is the average of the sample variances, is used in place of the variance of the populations. We have the estimate of the population variances for our formula. Now we need to determine what value we will use for n. Both conditions have the same number of scores, 17, so our n is 17. Now we can calculate our estimated standard error of the difference, which equals 0 0.5805. The next step is to find the t to use for the confidence interval. This t depends on our level of confidence 
and we refer to it as T sub CL. To calculate T sub CL, we need to know the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is the number of independent estimates of variance on which MSE is based. This is equal to N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1, where N1 is the sample size for the first group, and N2 is the sample size of the second group. For this example, the degrees of freedom is 17 minus 1 plus 17 minus 1, which equals 32. Something you may have noticed about this example is that N1 equals N2 equals 17. When N1 equals N2, it is conventional to use N to refer to the sample size of each group. From either the inverse T distribution calculator or a T table, you can find that the T for a 95% confidence interval for 32 degrees of freedom is 2.0369. We now have all the components needed to compute the confidence interval. First, we know the difference between means. M1 minus M2 equals 5.3523 minus 3.8824, which equals 1.470. We know the standard error of the difference between means is 0 0.5805, and that the T for the 95% confidence interval with 32 degrees of freedom is 2.0369. Therefore, the lower and upper limits of the 95% confidence interval can be computed to be 0 0.29 and 2.65. We can write the confidence interval as 0 0.29 is less than or equal to mu sub f minus mu sub m, which is less than or equal to 2.65. In plain English, the difference between population means is likely to be between 0 0.29 and 2.65. Most computer programs that compute t-tests require your data to be in a specific form. Consider the data in the table here. There are two groups, each with three observations. To format these data for a computer program, you normally have to use two variables. The first specifies the group the subject is in, and the second is the score itself. The table on the right shows the data reformatted into two variables. Notice that there are six rows now instead of three. This is because there is a row for each observation with the group assignment and measurement for each. As an exercise, use the analysis lab to find the 95% confidence interval on difference for these data. We have just reviewed an example of computing the confidence interval of the difference where the two sample sizes were equal. Of course, sample sizes are not always the same. The calculations for unequal sample sizes are described in the text of the standard mode for this section. Mm -hmm.